um, sensible to make a start. So thank you for um, coming along um, this morning. As you know, we're going to be talking about um, SCP um, this morning. Um, and what we wanted to do was to kind of give people, um, I know there's been quite a lot of engagement going on at the moment about where we're up to with SCP, but I thought it would be useful to use this as another opportunity to give people a chance to ask some questions and to, um, to feedback um, any, any views um, on that. So um, Ian, if you can pop the, the slides up, please. Thanks. So um, I'm just going to give um, a very brief, and it will be hopefully very brief, um, kind of just overview of some of the key issues around uh, cohort two of SCP. Hopefully, um, you'll have all have had the opportunity either to be um, involved in part of the um, the other engagement events we've been doing around this, or and or to have seen the videos that we've put together. Which I know there's quite a lot of detail in that. It's quite a lot to get your head around. Um, but rather than go through all of that again, um, we thought it would be, be useful to, um, to have the, the opportunity for more conversation about that. So I'm just going to give um, a, a, a very kind of high level overview. Um, if anyone's got any immediate questions after that, we'll, we'll take them then if you can put them in the chat. Um, it, and um, we'll take any kind of general questions just arising from that first. Um, and then we're going to have um, some breakout discussions, which um, Helen and Darian have um, very kindly offered, offered, cajoled, volunteered um, to lead. Um, uh, Helen's going to lead uh, a discussion on um, SCP and TLSE Campus Life and Darian on um, PGR. And we've got three questions there, which hopefully some of you will, will recognise because we've been asking them um, in all the engagement events that we've been, we've been doing around kind of benefits, challenges and risks and, and further opportunities. Um, we'll take about 25 minutes for that and then um, get some feedback. And then um, if there's any further kind of questions um, or, or comments that people want to make, we'll, we'll pick that up. We'll see how that all goes. If there's a bit of time at the end, if people have got more general questions just on everything that's happening, then that, that's fine. We'll, we'll take some of those at the end um, if, there's, if there's time to, to do so. So, Ian, if you go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, just a couple of reminders. I know everyone hears this every time we have this meeting, but um, just to remind people, we're recording the meeting. Uh, and we will post it on the internet if for anybody who hasn't been able to see it. So if you don't, if you don't want to be a star of the faculty internet, uh, turn your video off. Um, if you can keep your audio muted, um, unless you want to um, ask a question or, or you're invited to speak, that would be great. Any questions, we're using the chat function for that. And if you can self-allocate to the breakout rooms. We have had a couple of slight technical hitches where we've done this recently with people. Um, we think it's because they're on an earlier version of Zoom, not being able to allocate themselves. But if, if you're not able to do that, if you can let us know and we can, and well, Ian can, can allocate you um, if there's any problems with, with that. Okay, so um, just to give a very brief kind of, you know, just overview of, of where we are. Um, I mean, obviously, um, this is kind of like, you know, the, the big kind of TLSE section of where we are on, on SCP now. Um, so it's a, it's a really major kind of um, piece of work. I don't need to tell you know, people that, and I know that many of you on this call will have far more knowledge of, of some of the detail of some of these areas and some of the... Um, the issues of where things are going well and where they're, where they're not going so well. Uh, and I would be the last person to say that SCP is going to be a, a panacea um, for all, Ill, all ills, but there are some really important principles about this and really important improvements to the way we're doing things that we're trying to obviously drive through with the changes that are going in through, through SCP. And key amongst those are the ones that are identified here um, for TLSE. So, you know, I think everyone would agree that more self-service for students with better systems and processes to support all of that would be a, a, a really um, helpful thing. And obviously the new campus solutions and the other tech solutions that we're putting in around that are absolutely designed to drive that self -serv increased self-service for students through my Manchester, etc. And about greater consistency in the way that we, we, we do things, which again, 
um, from feedback from our students, it's very clear that what they're saying to us is, you know, we, we, we really appreciate that, that and want that greater consistency. One of the major things that I know has been a, a big talking point is the proposal to have a consolidated student hub and we're calling them hubs, but that's not necessarily what they're going to be called. It's just what we're using as a bit of a shorthand um, to provide that front of house service. Um, for for students and the idea the proposal is that there will be nine of these so they will be attached to each of the schools but that doesn't necessarily mean that a student must use the one that's attached to their school they're all going to be providing a general service and then clearly there will be more school specific services um, in 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 each in each area so um, and that will take us away from as it says there you know over a hundred different kind of touch points that we have for students at the moment, which again, student feedback is saying to us, it, it's confusing, we don't understand where to go. I know there are some concerns about it becoming too impersonal, that's one of the things we're going to have to work through um, as we as we develop the, the design. And aligned to that, uh, proposing aligned and consistent structures and job descriptions across the whole of the function of teaching, learning and student experience um, and making an assessment of the appropriate staffing levels um, according to business needs. So related to size, complexity, um, you know, particular characteristics of, of different um, programme areas um, and that we can look at that across the university and that gives us more flexibility um, and ability to support things. Again, I know there's quite a lot of discussion about moving from kind of you know the sort of cradle to grave program um, kind of um, approach that we've had in a number of areas through to a more functional um, type of, of organization and that's something that we're, we're considering as we as we move through that thanks Ian um, in terms of PGR I mean Essentially, um, we are building on the doctoral academy model that we already have in BMH um, and looking at developing that, learning from what's worked well and what we think we can improve further and, and adopting that model across um, the university. So a, a, a PGR service based at faculty level, but working very closely in a business partnering relationship with, with schools. Um, and again, you know, talking about um, communities of practice, we've identified that for PGR, but that's also um, something that we're proposing across each of the areas so that we would have communities of practice as we've currently developed for, for student recruitment and admissions in, uh, in the earlier part of SEP, so that we share that good practice and share knowledge and, uh, and experience across the university, um, which I think people are already appreciating, certainly through um, so if I think of areas like the heads of teaching and learning student experience in our schools, they have a community of practice across the university and I know they've, they've fed back to me to say that it's really been helpful in kind of always having somebody you can kind of pick up the phone to or get on a Zoom to and say, what, have you got this issue, what do we think about that, it, it just helps quite a lot. Um, we are putting marketing, recruitment and admissions for PGR in the PGR teams, that's the proposal rather than obviously at the moment for undergrad and PGT, we have uh, recruitment marketing teams and admissions teams that are part of uh, TLSE in the faculty. And the PGR funding resource will be within PGR service. So again, for PGR, there is the proposal is that there is that separate kind of one-stop shop um, for PGR. There's a bit of a, a, a discussion still going on about um, whether we use the hubs for PGR or that the, the, there's a separate kind of entry point and that that's still under um, that's still under discussion. So just a few um, of the benefits that we are um, that we have identified from from where, where we are and what we're doing with um, with SCP. I've um, already talked about self-service for students um, and the replacement of the, the disparate um, points and again, you know, improvements to the back-end processes and more efficient ways of working means that we can help our students and get, what, and get the support that we need to them more quickly. For academic colleagues, um, 
the, you know, we're trying to free up more of their time to support teaching and academic support activities so that we're doing the things that we should be doing in PS and academic colleagues are doing the things they should be doing as, as academics. Um, more consistency about structures and roles and clarity around providing support. Um, we've really started to, to think uh, in a lot of detail about how we how we really support student mental health and well-being how we need to improve our student support services um, and, and to really ensure that we've got a, a, a more streamlined um, and focused system across across the university and um, part of the work that we've been doing relates to SCP is around engagement monitoring um, and putting in systems so it's easier to track student progress and to identify the students that need support and thinking about what that means in terms of um, who in the schools can then um, oversee kind of ensuring that we can provide that support so you know there's no point just having a system that can do this if there's then nobody that can pick that up and actually um, do the help so that we can support those students um, particularly our uh, WP students who um, we need to ensure have got the support they need um, to uh, to succeed and um, and progress so then for, uh, for for us for PS staff um, you know, obviously there's a, there's a priority here around being clear and having consistent structures and job descriptions and that hopefully will help in terms of people being able to see where their, where their pathways for, for progression and, and career development um, would be. Linked to that, talks about communities of practice and staff networks so that we encourage people to work together better across the institution um and to you know um and to support each other and i think we do need to build a culture of more flexibility and of people feeling more comfortable to move across different areas it's great to build experience and expertise in a particular area but it's also really great to share that um across the university and i won't embarrass people by mentioning this but we've got you know i can think of two or three people who've quite recently come into the faculty from other places in the university and they've brought really great expertise with them as well as being able to pick up how we do things sometimes differently in in the in the faculty um very well so it's about getting the right balance this is not about moving everybody around kind of on some sort of mad merry-go-round but it is about trying to get the balance of uh, building expertise and, and experience, but also enabling and supporting people to get different experiences um, across, across the university. And that will help us to make it easier to manage, um, as it says there, peaks in workload and to cover staff leave, because that's always a challenge, trying to ensure that we can um, keep providing a service when people are either off sick or on holiday, or you know, um, we've got particular kind of um, challenges. Um, so we're going to move to breakout groups in a minute. Um, just check if anyone's got any immediate questions they want to ask in the in the in the chat. I know there are a lot of um, questions and issues that people have. I've been um, keeping uh, an eye on the feedback that we've had fed through from the engagement events that we've had right across the university and there's some really interesting questions being raised. I think one of the things that people keep asking is, well, how, how are we, you know, how are we actually going to take all of this on board? And clearly, as with all these things, there's a balance between there's an awful lot of work already been done. And clearly, we have got some proposals here that, you know, we, we've, we've, uh, we've gone through and made available to people at a high level, I appreciate. So it's a high level. But, you know, we do need to ensure. And so at one level, you know, I don't think we're going to be going back to the drawing board and saying we've got it all wrong unless we get a lot of feedback that's saying that and we haven't had that as yet. Um, but but on the other hand, we do need to ensure that where people are raising really sensible um, points, a lot of which have been raised, we are taking those on board and building them into the more detailed design um, around around the system um, and the structures and thinking about what what all of that means. So. I don't think anybody's raised any questions uh, as yet. So, uh, by the magic of technology, hopefully we can. Um, groups. Helen, is there anyone going to do feedback? Have you managed to persuade anybody else to do the feedback from you? Oh, I, I, I entirely failed to think about that. <laughs> um, so, no, uh, there, there was a moment where I thought it was just going to be me talking to everybody, but thankfully we, we got some good conversation going. 
uh, and the, yeah, people were you know, able to, to see uh, the positives and, you know, uh, this kind of in principle, yes, we see the consistency and the harmonization uh, um, and, and, you know, a, a, an expectation or not an expectation, but a kind of understanding that there was a lot of student experience, student focus from this. Um, we had Fiona in our group from an academic perspective who just raised some concerns about the level of academic engagement um, and the kind of heightened concerns that there are in, in some areas of, of the, the, the academic sphere around how this will impact them. Uh, and then I guess inevitably for our faculty, we talked a lot around different areas about um, some of the nuance and specialization. So, you know, we, we, we talked about timetabling and then the challenge of placements and, and clinical work and how there's quite a lot of change and that potential distance between faculty and school. Uh, we talked as we had in the, the forum yesterday about uh, people needing to kind of come back and hear more about the technology and process. So, you know, what are the ways of working? How will they change? How is the structure doing that? Uh, and a really helpful comment from Caroline from Dentistry about that she felt there weren't enough people from the business engaged in SEP and feeding in and, and helping shape some of those deliverables. Um, you know, and there's lots of potential. So we talked about the CRM um, and people maybe needing to just experience what that CRM um, improvements is and what it means to have a online um, form that students use and then a workflow behind the CRM and that maybe people need to, to see a little bit more to make some, see more tangible benefits. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of concern about centralization and, and a loss of some of our smaller programs um, and a, a bit of a discussion we had some really positive feedback from um, biological sciences about how they had moved to more functional teams and, and Chris from nursing around how they had worked in more functional areas. But then the flip side of that, you know, for the smaller programs like dentistry, like um, speech and language, how there's a, a worry that they might get lost and that they do have that kind of more cradle to grave approach and that, that specialization and, and knowledge. Um, and then I guess that feeling also just as like, um, kind of wanting to understand more about the hubs and, and where students will go with queries and, and making sure that that really strong connection that we have in our programs to our students doesn't get lost yeah. through the hubs. So yeah, we had um, quite a varied discussion. We also, Jane brought up about communication in terms of when we did the faculty merger, we had kind of a weekly Thursday update and what are they gonna be the communication methods um, and how will we hear about it? And one of the things that I said is that you know, particularly for our kind of managers, one of the things that's useful for me is to hear what people are talking about in teams and to have that fed back about what other things that people would like to talk about or hear more information about rather than just trying to work out or, or, or decide what we think people need to hear about because often they're quite different things. And so a kind of proactivity from people to say, we want to hear about this or we have questions about this that we can then respond to. So yeah, it's a good discussion. Thanks. Great, thanks Helen. Yeah, and I think that last point's really, really um, useful and, and, and really important in terms of kind of sometimes, you know, particularly when you're doing big programs like this, you, you don't hear what people actually really want to know about. So I think, as Helen says, it's really important that people feed back to us and say, look, I don't, I don't really get what's going on here and you don't, you know, you're not telling me anything about it. So can we talk about that? And we'll, we'll feed all of that back. That's, that's really, really helpful. Thank you. Darian, PGR. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, I also realised about halfway through that I hadn't uh, thought to cleverly delegate someone to feedback, <laughs> um, which I have done in the other sessions. <laughs> um, but firstly, um, in terms of um, opportunities, one thing that uh, we I flagged in the in the session is that in the engagement sessions of the academic community, the feedback around the doctoral academy model is so positive. Um, and I think that uh, when I speak about the opportunities, I'll refer back to that. But throughout all the sessions that we've had, it's really celebrated and highlighted how successful the, the doctoral academy model is. Now, that's not saying that we want to replicate like for like. Um, this is an opportunity to sort of uh, look at what, what's working really well and what we can improve upon. But the, the general feel around the Doctoral Academy is that it's, it's a really, really positive structure. Um, in terms of the benefits, uh, we discussed the uniqueness of being uh, a PGR because they're a group of them of themselves uh, and that we're actually able to design a structure across the university to support a group of people who are very unique, some are staff and students um, and feel embedded within their research groups. So it's recognizing that this isn't, they are students, but there's, a, there's 
uh, specific aspects around the PGR that the Doctoral Academy can really help support. Um, another benefit was the single point of contact and having the Doctoral Academy as a space to, uh, as a space to go to. Um, we also had a discussion around uh, the ability to streamline communications to the PGR community um, through a Doctoral Academy and actually feedback that we had from some of the PGR students in the engagement sessions is that um, obviously they've got friends in other faculties or they might be on programs with other with other faculties and that during a really uh, difficult time through closure, the PGR community in FBMH felt that they were communicated to really closely, they were kept in regular, they were regularly updated and a difficult time was actually made a lot smoother where uh, their their friends and other faculties actually, they felt that they weren't being kept in the loop and they often missed out on, on essential um, briefings and updates. So to have a consistency across the university and have the same model across the university and a larger community of practice was seen as a benefit. Um, and that, that, yeah, being able to share that knowledge and expertise across the university. Uh, the risks um, uh, is making sure that we engage with all the relevant stakeholders when we're looking um, at, uh, uh, PGR through SEP. Um, there are staff within the divisions um, that do supply, provide support to, to PGRs and making sure that we don't lose sight or contact with those people as part of these discussions. Um, and there was also a um, really helpful point made around systems and knowledge of systems. So if the, if the PGR students are going to be using a particular system, um, will there be training and uh, what sort of training will be rolled out for the PS community who might need that outside of the potentially outside of the Doctoral Academy as well. So uh, Liz and I are going to feed um, that back in the working group this afternoon, just to get some timeframes around training. Um, and then we had a discussion around finances and P codes um, and some of the challenges that we have um, around, around the appropriate nature of um, approvals and authorization and budget holders. And in terms of opportunities, um, we do have a really, like I said, we've got this really positive news story within FBMH. And I think one of the opportunities we have is to work with the other faculties as they go through the SAP journey for PGR to showcase how successful the move from the scattered support into the Doctoral Academy has been, um, because there will be uh, the changes uh, that FSE and humanities are facing. Actually, uh, Jessica, having a bit, uh, Jessica or some of the PGR leads um, maybe doing a little video or um, as part of the SAP video sets or some, some engagement sessions to talk about how we've moved into that doctoral academy positively and opportunities to support the other faculties through this process as well. Um, and I think unless anyone wants to chip in, I think I've, I've covered that for PGR. Okay, thanks Darian. Thanks, that's really, really helpful. I mean, just a couple of kind of Quick comments from from me, and then I've got I've got a, a question um, in the chat that I want to just pick up that probably won't see because it's someone that's just asked me directly, but I'll 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 just pick that up in a minute. I think this question about training and development and support for people and what we're calling in the program jargon business readiness is is really really critical and absolutely that point that you made, Darian, about training and support for, for people, you know, which is true, obviously, across the whole of the programme is really, really important. So systems support and training, but also, you know, with hubs, etc, thinking about customer service training and how we enable people to take on some of those those roles um, is going to be really, really critical. And part of what we're doing uh, as we work through is to think about what that that means in terms of kind of business readiness and providing the support for people. One of the things that we we are trying to do is is to kind of learn from um, what's what's gone well around cohort one around recruitment and admissions and what's not gone so well and to try and learn from that and pick up some of those um, kind of you know sort of lessons learned and and apply them um, in in a way that's more helpful for um, for, for cohort two so that is really important and that that kind of relates to the question that I've been asked about kind of plans to evaluate success or or otherwise of of SEP. So I think it is really critical that we kind of, you know, do a lessons learned exercise and that we listen to, you know, we really listen to what the feedback from people that have been directly kind of involved and 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 uh and impacted in terms of their roles through through all of this. Um it, it's probably worth saying I I had I did a um some of you may have been on it, I did a, a an in conversation um session on diversity and inclusion a couple of weeks ago and one of the 
issues that was raised was people felt we'd not been as inclusive as we should have been around some of the work we did around admissions, which I thought was really helpful. And I've encouraged those people to kind of give us some examples. And I think it's really important that we that we kind of get that feedback and, and understand that. And if it's not going well, so the other part of the question I've been asked is how prepared is the SLT to go back on some of this if it's clearly not working? Um, we've got to. If it's clearly not working, we can't just sit there and say this is the new structure and we're, we're, we're going with it. We have to get the feedback, but we have to get the feedback from a variety of different stakeholders. And one of the challenges that we've got with this, and we can see it all the time, is what the students are saying they want and what our academic colleagues are saying we want and what we want don't always align. So getting that balance between the different stakeholders um, is, is, is really challenging. Um, and this is the student experience programme. And we do recognise as a principle, as an organisation, we need to be more student centred. So that's a lot of what's, what's driving this. We need to kind of recognise that. Um, so I've just been asked whether it's objective measures and not just feedback. Yes, it will be a mixture of, of feedback. Uh, and also assessing what's what's actually happening. Um, it's difficult to get a baseline on some of this, but you know we can see that just um, you know as as an example, um, I know we've been tracking kind of the number of um, kind of queries we're getting through the the central student services centre and how long it's taking to answer, and the 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 backlog is is just awful. The amount of time it's taking us to answer basic queries from students is shockingly bad. Uh, and that's because we haven't got the right systems and processes um, in place. So we need to get that, that mixture of things uh, around, um, around all of that. Um, the other thing I was just going to mention was, and I know this has come up a lot through the hubs, but also what Darian was saying about the Doctoral Academy, sharing the good practice where we've got things working well and we've got them working in a, well that we're we're in a way that we're proposing to move towards to for other areas. That's really important that we share that good practice and we share that experience that people have got. And I know, for example, in some of the hubs conversations that's come up where we've had a more hubbed approach in some areas of the university already. The people working in those areas have been able to talk about it and we've got um, evidence from other universities where it's worked well and some where it's worked not so well. And we're trying to avoid clearly the ones where it's not worked so well. And that's, that's tended to be where things have been um, over centralized and not got the right kind of systems and process support to what people are doing at the, at the front end. So thank you for all of that. We will keep um, talking with people um, about SCP and uh, where we're at um, and, and, uh, and working with you and listening to your feedback and taking that on board. So thank you everybody for your, your contributions this morning. Um, we're kind of out of time, so I'll give everybody um, a couple of uh, minutes back. As, as ever, if there are suggestions you've got for other sessions like this or uh, other questions that you want to ask, um, please drop us a line um, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer. But thank you all for all your efforts. I know it continues to be really pressured. There's loads on. Everything's still changing. We still don't know what's kind of happening in you know a couple of weeks' time, really. Um, but you know, I know everyone's doing their absolute best. Keep safe, keep well, look after yourselves, uh, and thank you for everything you do. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you. <laughs>